what steps I need to take. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of the Commit Message podcast presented by the University of Windsor's very own Computer Science Society. The podcast where we talk about CS-related careers with people working in the industry. And since it's our first ever episode, I'll introduce you to myself as well. I'm your host, Zane Raza, a current undergraduate CS student at the University of Windsor. A little bit more about me before I talk more about the podcast. I'm currently ending my third year. I've just ended my third year. I'm in the summer semester right now as a recording on June 11th. I am currently doing an internship at NetSuite owned by Oracle as a associate software developer. And when I was a, a wee first year, as I would like to say, I was wondering where is all the information and content regarding what I have to do to get out of wherever I am as a first year student and become like a full-time software developer. Now, over time I got resources th and the, like books and like things on the internet about stuff like this. But there was never anything comprehensive, like, for example, a podcast that talks with actual industry professionals about what, well, what steps I need to take. And suddenly I became the career advisor at the CSS, the Computer Science Society at the University of Windsor. And I thought, well, it's time to implement on my idea, right? So here I am talking to you about people in their careers, giving you advice about where you should go. So our first guest today, it's a it's a bit of a doozy. I won't lie, Harsh Deep, uh, my senior, uh, I think two years, old, uh, maybe no, it's two years ahead of me. He graduated last year, and this guy has done it all, man. This guy came over from India. This guy got his got some internships, and and finally he got a he ended it with a career in software development and i think this is possibly the best first guest i could have had on because he really shows you that no matter where you are you can make it okay as long as you have the right resources and the right knowledge you can make it and even if you don't have some of this you can make your own and that's the important thing i talk about with harsh is that y you have to take care or take shape of your own destiny right and I'm sure you, you'll hear more about this a little bit later when I actually talk to him, because we talk about a lot of things there. Other than that, <sighs> I'm excited to give you your, well, our first episode of TCM, which will really quickly be roughly an hour, an hour and a half long, probably, for the remainder of its run. I'm planning to do this bi-weekly which means just twice a month, roughly. And I'm going to keep having guests, so if you want to be, or you, if you know someone who would be really good on this podcast, feel free to DM me on LinkedIn, on Discord, wherever you can find me. I'll, I'll have links below. I think our, I think our overlay has, has my LinkedIn. And whoever it is, I'm, I'm willing to talk to you guys. Just, I'm really excited to bring you guys our first episode. Here you go. Enjoy the first ever episode with Harsh Deep. Welcome back to TCM. Uh, I have my first ever guest here. Hi, Harsh Deep. Hi, hi, Sam. How are you doing? Doing amazing. I'm excited to have you as my first guest here because you've done a lot of things, right? So, where are you r right now? Uh, right now, I'm a full time software developer at Helio Clinic. And uh, I work as a full stack developer, both front end and back end. That's like I'm... the dream, doesn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a remote work, and uh, it's good, really good. I like and enjoy it, enjoy it a lot. Okay, Harship. Uh, also, <clears throat> you have an interesting story about how you even got here into the country, Canada. I mean, <clears throat> can you elaborate more on even how you got here before before any of this stuff happens, like end of yeah. school, start of university here? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I studied until high school in India, and uh, I decided to come to Canada and study computer science. Uh, applied for visa, study permit, and everything. And I came here in 2017, fall. And uh, I think it's uh, the process was pretty simple. I just had to apply. 
uh, what was the difficult part was do I really want to do computer science and what university to choose and uh, like when is the right time should I come in fall or like there was a lot of like I have I had no idea what to do and I had no idea how things work here so researching was the tough part but applying stuff and then coming here that was I think it was okay right so my first question here is how did you decide on computer science um you know actually computer science was not my first uh, option I did not think computer science would be my career, even though I was into computers since, you know, since high school and stuff. But uh, I just decided, oh, may as well try computer science. Like, it wasn't like I have always wanted to do it, but it was a realization when I saw that computer science is an option. Wait, I'm actually good at computers, so I should try that. So right. I was like, okay, hey, let's try that. Okay, so you've decided on computer science. Have you... How did you decide on which university, or was it whichever one took you? Well, uh, I think I was looking at a couple of universities all over Canada, and uh, diplomas were some options too, because uh, for international student, diplomas are cheaper, and you get to, if you're trying to get a permanent residence, it's much faster. But, uh, well, my parents insisted on a degree, and I think that, that was the right decision on getting a degree, because what if I don't want to study after my diploma? Or if I just get a job and I'm like, oh, I don't want to study anymore. So that was a good option. Uh, it, it, it was expensive, but I think it was worth it. Uh, looking at universities, I think uh, University of Windsor was good. And my, since I didn't know a lot of stuff here, I, my assumption was University of Windsor is right next to USA. So maybe I would have more opportunities as well. I mean, I could do that still, but I think uh, that was one of my counting factors for University of Windsor. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> So now that you've landed here, let's assume back in the story, you're yeah. now here, you've figured out all the rent, all, all this stuff. Now yeah. you're here at a university in Canada, you know basically no one, I'm guessing, correct? That's right. And no, okay. nobody yeah. that's a foreign nobody. country. You're yeah. here in Windsor studying computer science. Do you know what the end goal is by the end of your fourth year? Do you know where you want to be? Not at all. My first uh, things were, uh, how do I buy groceries here you know like i'm here i'm 17 years old i don't know how, how things work here i just know that i need to follow what i've been doing in high school show up at university attend classes do exams and we'll see what happens what was the changing point though was um, the orientation for the university of Winter. I think that was extremely beneficial like i i met people i met uh, senior students I talked to one of my uh, mentors who I could still talk to. It's a very good friend of mine. And uh, just asking questions like, "What? how do things happen here? And he was so excited to tell me things. And he was like, I feel like if I didn't attend that orientation, I would probably just be focusing on getting good grades and just figuring out what, what do I want? So no, it, I had no idea at all. Okay. So... <clears throat> You're still you're sort of figuring stuff out. At what point in your university career did you realize maybe I should I want to go into software development here? Well, yeah, I see. I see what you mean. So software developer is what the basic default uh, job is anyway in computer science. Like if I'm doing computer science, I'll be doing computer, uh, software development. I think it was beneficial of knowing what other things are. There are a million other jobs that you can pursue after computer science with software developers, you know, default. So I still didn't know. I don't think I ever knew what I want to do. I just knew that I don't, I'm not that good at, let's say, uh, like in first or second year, I had no idea what AI or machine learning is. And I was like, I don't think I'll be going into this stuff or I'll not be doing PhD if I'm reading things like neural networks and stuff. So all I knew was um, I need a good, by, by the end of first year, I think I knew what I wanted. In terms of uh, making progression before my fourth year, like what do I need to have before I graduate, so that whatever I want to do, I have the op options open. Okay, so yeah. <clears throat> we've gotten a bit into your background. W yeah. <clears throat> now I'd like to talk to you more on the career side of things. Okay, so you had a first ever internship or co-op, as we like to call it. Was it a co-op for you? Yeah, that was a co-op. Okay, so co-op basically means, for those who don't know, it was an internship provided by the University of Windsor's co-op program, which means that you applied on their job site, whereas normally you'd go on LinkedIn or whatever you go. So 
tell tell me how you you how you got the first co-op um i think i want to start with uh knowing like i i want to be as relatable as possible because that's true like whoever's uh trying to know uh, whoever's in first or second year or even third they're like how do things work and i'm not seeing any success at all uh, trust me i have i have been there and uh you know people say that who are already at some place further than you they say that i've been there but that's true like just listen to them what they say like you will get there and uh, my first co-op i applied to more than 150 places and uh, i only got interviews in two so it's more about don't give up and uh it, it's it's like uh co before co-op I, I had some experience in terms of hackathons and this was this goes all the way back to my student orientation again where jose who's who's my mentor who was in third year at that point told me that you should go to hackathons now i don't know what hackathons mean i have been told by my parents to make sure i get good marks in university because they're paying a lot and this guy is telling me to go to another university and attend a hackathon spend your weekend there and i just trusted him like blindly like he's he was like okay i'll go to a hackathon i learned this new technology called react and i'll just do something now that thing builded something on my resume and I knew how things work outside school. You would never know, like, I don't think you would be studying C and then you would be like, hey, I know C, so give me a job. So that's, that's how it works. <laughs> right? So anyways, in first year, you don't learn anything. You just learn C. You spend two semesters learning C. At least and you don't, answer, right? Yeah, you don't know data structures. You don't know... Um, and you're taking electives, and you still don't know how you're going to plan your whole four years. So this guy, Jose, just wants to help me a lot. And I'm like, great, I'll go to a hackathon. And I just loved it. I spent 36 hours doing something that I have never done before. I did not do anything. My team was like, they were all professionals. They were in fourth year. And they're just kind enough to let me in their team to just see me. Like, I was just watching them. And okay. yeah, so... That was something then i decided to go to two more hackathons within my first year okay. so by the end of first year i have three hackathons experience i have my own website which which is not like it's it's just a website like html and stuff but i had something that i could fill my resume with so when i was applying to jobs i could at least be like i'm trying you know i'm not just here are my grades which are not great by the way i did not do very well in first year okay. so um, that was a trade-off you have some, if you're not that good, if you're not like born smart, you know, there's a trade off. You either apply practical knowledge and get a lot of hands on experience, or you get really good grades. Okay. So okay. sometimes so, it's a trade off. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm a first year student, I'm going, yeah. to, going to whatever to school, school, and my thoughts are do I focus really hard on grades, or is it more important to get these resume fillers like hackathons, like uh, event stuff? Go yeah, through. yeah. do both. I mean, definitely do both. Do you want to do master's? Even if you say no right now, maybe you want to do it in third year. So don't mess your grades. But don't just focus on grades. 99, it's fine. You get 95, it's fine. But definitely do hackathons. Hackathons are the most real-world experience you can get. And you, have an ex you don't have an excuse. You're going to another university. Well, now they're mostly online. But you're going to another university. You're spending some money. Well, usually you get a lot of things back. But you're spending some money. You're spending 36 hours of probably no sleep coding something, which is probably be shit anyway. But uh, you, you did something. And you can have something added on your resume. And computer science, I think, is the only career that you can get into where you can make your own experience. You don't need somebody to give you a job for you to have experience. Right. There's creative ways to do this, right? Exactly. Okay, so before we go on to your application periods for every one of your co-ops, uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to hit this important point because a lot of people ignore this, especially as someone with, like, zero connections, can I say? Did you have, like, almost none? Uh, connections as in, what, like, what do you to mean? to the job, to, like... Uh... Like, you didn't have friends in actual positions that would give you positions, right? If you yeah. had friends, they were in low level and they couldn't really give you anything, right? So especially, yeah. 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 For Vista friend, no. I don't think I had any... No, I didn't have anybody to... Right. It's just another job that I... It was my second interview. Only second interview that... Only one of the two interviews that time when I applied. Yeah. And I went there and... Um, 
it was it was how the interview went. There were actually other people right next to me who were also I knew and they were interviewing for the position too. And I don't know what to expect. Just the interview was like they told me things that this is what we wanted to do. This is what the job and stuff. And this was exactly what I was studying in my second year. And I was going to study in the second semester of my second year. And I don't know, I just couldn't hide that I was excited about it. Like, I wasn't even picking it. I was like, oh, this is what I'm studying right now, which you want me to do. And I think that's what the manager got into that. And I got the job. So it, it's, um, it's not like, oh, you had a really good experience. You had a big resume. That's why you gave you a job. It was more like I was motivated and interested to do something. Okay. Yeah. So let me backtrack a little bit. There's a very important point here that a lot of people miss, especially when you have little to no connections, is that there's a mindset you must have when you're applying, especially even to internships, because right. there's actually much fewer of them than full-time developer options, right? For sure, so yeah. What's the, while you're sitting there on the computer, you're probably looking something like this, right? A, you're, <clears throat> you're grinding out of your mind. What keeps you going? What keeps you going? What keeps pushing you forward? while you apply what keeps pushing me forward uh that's a really good question i have to think about it actually um let me think how was my first why did i apply to 150 because now that i think of it if somebody who's really new when i tell them like 150 that's a big number yeah i think it's just uh you just gotta grind like i don't think i was thinking i was like i need a job all right i, I need to go up and there's a kind of peer pressure and the pressure of co-op as well like there's rounds and rankings stuff like that you're like you need to apply to a job so i think i definitely what kept me going forward was i did a variety maybe i didn't just apply to co-op jobs i didn't just um like i i find found jobs by myself like on linkedin indeed and i kept applying i had this it was just it wasn't um it was like hours long, just a flow that, yeah, I got to keep applying. I don't care what the requirements are. Don't worry about requirements, by the way. Requirements are always, usually requirements, they just ask you everything that you would be using. But you're an intern, you're mostly there to learn. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you would need to maybe not even do any one single requirement and you should be okay. For my first job, I didn't know PHP. but And my whole job was, I was a solo developer of a PHP website of an internal web app, and I had never worked on PHP before. So, I, I don't know, Yeah, you just get the job, even my current job, with the whole tech stack, I didn't know any of that. And I learned it after getting the job. So it's just, it's, you have to show your potential and your interest, instead of being like, I need to check all the requirement marks and that's why I'm gonna apply. Don't read too much. There's 1,000 jobs and there's 10,000 applicants. Right. You won't be ignored. And if you get ignored, there's another job. Remember, it only takes one, right? So Yeah, it only takes one, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. My next question would be was, how was your first job experience? Because you're you're completely new here, like you're in your second year. You're mm -hmm. you're you're in Vistaprint now as a yeah. they call it like a computer science student, right? But you're actually just a developer, right? So Right. So what what was it like going from like homework assignments like exams to now you're rolling up every day like whatever nine to five eight to four yeah. something yeah. like that and now you're you're expected to for to like some to some degree do something how do right. you feel um that's the um, the talking about requirements the requirement of vista friend was you need to have a g2 license and a car I didn't have even have a G1 and I still applied and I got the job because I never told them I don't have a car. I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to apply. I don't care. Um, and it was so far. Like I had a one hour way to go to Tecumseh from winter through bus. And I was like, even if I get the job, how am I going to show up here? So that was my first obstacle after I got the job. I found a ride share, a guy who some worked somewhere nearby. And somehow I found him through WhatsApp or something. And uh, we just decided, okay, I'm going to pay you every day. You go there anyway. So that's how I figured that out. So that was good. Otherwise, I don't know what was going to happen. But uh, yeah, so in terms of job, my first day was orientation. The next day, they tell me that I the, the project this semester is creating an internal web app. And 
you get to decide what tech stack you want to use. You get to decide how you want to do it. We just have this problem and you solve it and you're the only developer. And I'm like, I don't think that's a really good idea for an intern, for a first internship, because you need mentorship. Yeah. But that was also exciting at the same point, because I was like, I get to decide everything and I get to implement what I have learned in um, my courses. For example, database course, like the the, say, the database course that we take in second year, right? Mm -hmm. You make tables and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to make my own database. And you quickly realize that what they teach you in school is just insert update statements. Yeah. And database yeah. <laughs> SQL is way bigger than you can possibly yeah. know in that course. So my manager was a really good mentor and I, he helped me a lot with SQL. Right. But the whole right. project was good. And uh, it was quite I won't call it challenging, actually. It was uh, it was fun, really fun. I would sometimes just be so zoned out in working because it's like my own little project because nobody's telling me, like, this is what we want. They're just telling me, you choose, you tell us what you want to do. We talk about it, we have meetings about it, and then we solve it. So it was great. It was fun. And I think this is, not everybody gets to experience this kind of uh, job, yeah. but it was so fun. Yeah, I, very few people I know do that especially inside their internship or co-op, however you want to say yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, okay. So we go on. This was your summer of second year. Now yes. we go on to third year, and this is the the big one, right? Deloitte. This is, that, is, is that how you say it? Deloitte, yeah. Deloitte. Yeah. Um, was... tell, me, tell me the story behind that. So I... just, for, yeah. just for a second. We're now entering, so this would be third year winter, right? So we've completed five semesters of school. Um, no, I have completed two, two years, two, four semesters. Yeah. And so that was two years of first year, then second semester, uh, I mean, third yeah. semester, then Vista Print, then fourth semester, then Deloitte. Okay. Oh, um, actually, I'm confused. Hold on. <laughs> um, first year. First, after no, first no, year. year. Yeah. So you've done five semesters. No, I have done. Because after the fourth one, you did Vista Print, right? Did I? Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. No, yeah, you're right. I have forgot. <laughs> so uh, third year, fall happens. You do whatever you want in fall. Yeah. Right? Now third year winter, we are looking at. Well, before before any of this, third year fall, what's happening? How are we applying? Where are uh, we applying? What's the best? We know the techniques now. What, what have we figured out now? Turns out nothing at all. It's I'm back to zero level. I okay for well after Vista Print, I actually it, I actually had a part time job there because I continued developing that uh, software. And after the part time job, I was offered that hey, you want to work here again for the next semester? And I was like, my manager was so. Kind like I told him that I'm gonna apply for other jobs, but if I don't get it, I'm gonna come back to you. Oh, so I was like, all right, the honest truth, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but he was like, okay, sounds good to me. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna find a better job now. I want something bigger, you know, move out of Vista Print, or move out of Windsor. And uh, I'm applying to jobs, and this time it's more than 150, and I am not getting any interviews. I'm not even getting a second round. I'm like, I have such a good experience right now. Like my, my resume has a shining that I'm a solo developer and stuff. Like it's like, how can someone say no to this? Right. It just goes and to show you it, it, it can happen to anyone. Right. Right. Exactly. Yep. Cause you just cannot point anything out that, yeah, this is why you're not getting, or I'm not good enough or anything. I'm like, okay. I don't know what's happening. So I get Deloitte through referral. Somebody referred my name and I yep. get an interview and I, my interview went okay. And then um, that was it. Like, I got the job. And then I told my manager at Visterbin that I got with Deloitte and I'm not going to come back to you. So he's like, okay. So, yeah, the, I got Deloitte. But it's it's uh, this was more than 150 jobs and I only got one interview this time. All right. And you landed Which, it. Was the interview anything hard at Deloitte? The, the interview? I think interview was completely okay. It was basic questions, no technical questions. Stuff like uh, what's the primary key, <laughs> so and uh, some basic like Java questions, I think. Okay. So it was more like uh, you know how computers work, right? <laughs> like the basics. Right. 
Because okay. yeah, Deloitte, there's no specific projects. It was Deloitte D Space specifically, mm-hmm. and uh, so they have different projects each semester for interns. So there's no specific requirement that we need you to know this before we can hire you. So if you just know if you're good enough, we just hire you, and then they make teams set of interns, and then we work on different projects. So it's prototyping lab. Right. So you do all this at Deloitte, and then you go back to school, and I think at this point in your timeline, I'm sorry if I sound like a stalker, I think I know the timeline now, uh, you became the career advisor for Computer Science Society, right? Yes, it was the semester after that, so okay. in my, yeah, I think this was in fourth, since fourth year actually, not third. Okay, so yeah. you decide, well now I know stuff that can help other people. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was in third year. I uh, I kind of got confused. Uh, I think after Deloitte, it was yeah. Maybe just get this part out. So this is the important thing that I want I want to bring up so that people hearing this can understand. Just because he had two internships didn't change his mindset. He wanted to keep going with adding stuff to his resume that made him more relevant. Okay, he helped yeah. out other people when he when he was in a position of power. Where he could, where he could help other people, just as he would want when he was in first year, such as his his mentor before him, right? So now, what are what are we doing in the fourth year? What is our plan? Do we have any anything grand planned outside of school when we graduate? Yeah, uh, right after Deloitte, um, my experience was not as good as I would say it was for Vista Print. So I was like. It's okay. Plus, Delight is a big name, so I knew what a big name means on a resume. Once you have, you just need a one big name. And I didn't want to waste any time studying or you know doing internships. So I knew I, I think I, if I push a bit more, I can just start working or looking for a full time in job instead of more internships. Okay. Which is which was just my decision. Some people want to do five internships in their degree, which is completely fine and sometimes makes sense. Like. I could have landed a U.S. internship for my next semester and be making much more before I graduate. Mm -hmm. But I just decided I don't want to study anymore. I just want to finish my degree. Like, I don't want to delay, not study anymore, but delay my graduation. Let me just sign out of co-op, drop out. And um, which they were like, all right, we'll let you go. (laughs) And then I said, okay. And then it's just uh, I started looking for full time. And this is yeah. fourth year, first semester, fourth year, second semester? This was fourth year, first semester. I think it's a good thing that I started looking very early. Like, okay. because I'm looking for full time and I'm looking more than four months before. Right. And uh, I think maybe it's too early, but I didn't want to be like, let me start looking at last month. So I started looking on time. We'll see if somebody likes me enough and, you know, they would just be either wait for me to graduate or we'll solve a solution. Like, we'll find a solution together. And this is exactly what happened for Helio Clinic when I interviewed for them. I told them that I'm going to graduate in about six months and I can start part-time now. They were like, okay. So I started part-time right away. And uh, after graduation, it was full-time. Sounds nice. Okay. Yeah. So we are now done school. We've graduated. This was like, what, a year ago or something? 2021? It was 2021, yeah. And we are now a full stack developer at Helio. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you never had a plan plan to go to masters or anything like that, or do you have something like that in the works right now? Yeah, that's a good question. Something I have been thinking about. Uh, I had no plans before. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm done with graduation, and I'm gonna just work now. But I think a masters is important. Like even though I, it's a uh, masters is like. It's sometimes it's beneficial. It's mostly on a personal choice, but I think it is. Plus, just having masters makes gives you a more value as a as a like on my resume. It gives me more value. So I'm probably gonna wait until I get my permanent residency in Canada. Right. And uh, I have no plans to change my jobs right now. So probably I'll be doing masters while doing working. I'm not gonna quit any job just to study again. So something like that. Nothing's final. Still deciding where I want to go, but uh, masters, I think, yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> now that we're we're we've caught up to you, uh, let me summarize real quick from what I've heard. Yeah. Harshdeep came from India with almost no information on like like any programming, 
He beat the odds, got internships twice, and then he got a full-time software developing development uh, job at Helio Clinic, right? Right. That that is correct. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I want to, sorry, I want to interrupt that I did know just HTML, which I did by myself when I was like 10 years old. I was like, I want to learn how to make websites. So I knew HTML and this was my, uh, in my hackathon, my first hackathon, this is what, what they decided to be like, okay, I will keep, keep you in team even though you don't know anything. Because I said I like HTML. <laughs> they were like, okay, that's, uh, that's a really good uh, enthusiasm. So let's, let's keep you in the team. So I knew HTML, if that helps. But I don't think it really matters. Like, if you don't know HTML, you're still in the same position as me if you're in first year. Right. So, um, Harshdeep, he, he put in the work. He he uh, applied as many times as he could. Even the second time took longer than the first. He learned some hard lessons. But to anyone who, you know, might be in a similar position, starting first year and with not much knowledge, or, you know what, they might be in, like, a diploma-type uh, uh, situation here. Or even, like, they're they're thinking about coming to, like, a university here in the West, and they might be somewhere in the East, China, India, these places. Do you, do you have any <clears throat> advice for people like that uh, before I get into other questions? Um, yeah, uh, my advice would be talk to people. Make friends. And uh, take every information, but you also use your intuition on deciding what uh, what to follow. Because if you're talking to 100 people, you will definitely get very opposing views. Mm -hmm. So make sure you trust who you're listening to, but also talk to people. Like without talking to people, you wouldn't know half of the things. Right. Okay, so probably so now we're going to get into the part where I'm, I'm going to talk as though like I'm a newer person and... I, I'm asking someone who knows stuff questions, I guess. Yeah. So it's a common misconception that let's start with internships first. Okay. So internships, correct? What, why should I be, why should I have an internship? I, I'm a first year student. You know, I just came into computer science. Why should I have an internship? Um, strictly from just, Talking about finance, like, why not make money as soon as you can rather than wait for a degree to finish and then work, you know? But that's just how, how you, if you're greedy enough to do it. But actual reason would be, like, why not? Why do you not want to do an internship? You get to experience how companies work. You get to experience the culture and the work of a company for a contract level job. You can move away of, after four months if you want. You don't have to... Uh, you know apply for it and then stay there and be an employee you can try different types of companies and work with each internship plus internships get to you can move anywhere you want you're still doing your degree yeah it's i don't see why would you not do an internship it's a relevant experience too yeah you, it, you like kind of get ahead, yeah. right of course yeah you and you get ahead i mean after if you finish your full time, you're you're done graduating and you have no experience on your hand. You just have a resume. I see a lot of people asking me like they have a, they show me a resume. They haven't done uh, internships, and and they're like we don't have anything to put onto. So and it's not like you should have done internships. And that's not what I like. Make your own projects. And if you don't want to do internships, you don't want you want your degree as soon as possible. Make your own projects. Show something show me that you can go right show have some relevant experience okay okay that's a nice answer now the next question i i would immediately receive is yes. how do i know what to put on my resume and what to keep away from it what are common re resume misconceptions for the internship level uh, mm -hmm. for computer science related jobs right well some at this point, like critiquing like hundreds of resume, I feel like uh, there are a lot of things that are so common that I memorize them that, oh, do this, do this, which is also like whenever you're asking somebody after you're listening to this podcast, if you're going to ask somebody about uh, resume tips or resume critique, like if you're going to ask them like, hey, can you 
critique my resume. Make sure you have completed what I'm gonna say. And we should probably have some... I think we already do. Yeah. Like, make sure your resume have these things. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead. Don't put any white space. Keep... Like, don't have a lot of white space on your resume. Hmm. And uh, th this is... Uh, I I'll, I'll follow up on why, but uh, also don't have more than one page of your resume. Mm -hmm. You want to scan as, a, as an employer or recruiter or even just a friend. If I want to sign, if I want to see your resume, I just want to see as soon as possible. Like, you know, they say six seconds and stuff. You had just used to spend six seconds on a resume. Just keep one page because you don't have a full time experience. You don't have a PhD that you got to show everything. But also do not put so little stuff that there's any white space at all. Mm -hmm. so how can you get rid of white space? Well, you add projects, you add what courses you're doing, some relevant courses, like I know database, object-oriented design. You add uh, some other stuff you've done in high school, stuff like that. And if the question is, how do I reduce from two page to one page? You remove older, um, older projects, or you only keep the projects, which would be more relevant to the job you're applying. In that case, you'll have to keep different resumes, but I don't think you would really need to just eliminate stuff. You don't need to keep put everything. By the end of second year, or by the end of third year, I had so much stuff and it hurt to remove this because I was like, I want to show this that I did this too, but I don't want to do it. But two pages a no-go and have bold keywords. Nobody's going to read paragraphs. Even though you have bullet points, they're still like paragraphs. If you have bold keywords, like, okay, this is what I did by X percent. This is like quantify things, bold keywords. It's very easier to read and it's easier to scan the whole page. Mm -hmm. so these are some common things. And I think in on our website, we have some other tips as well on how to write a resume. And these are the most common things that are said, which is quite surprising because they're said almost every day. And when somebody new is asking, can you critique my resume? It's like, why do I got to repeat the same stuff I wrote yesterday? So at least do those first, and then you ask for critique. You would get a much more better uh, critique on that. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, another question that's very common is, so I've got my first internship, right? And now I'm looking, f I'm looking to either, so in University of Windsor, drop co-op, mm -hmm. or do I keep co-op and keep uh, using like, uh, their resources, I guess. It's a really good question. Everybody's confused about that. I decided to drop co-op after my second internship because I knew Deloitte is a good name. And I can try. Maybe it'll take a little longer. But having Deloitte and having other kinds of experience that I have, I was confident in myself that I'm going to land a full-time for sure. Okay. But if you're like, maybe I won't get something as quickly, or maybe I really want to have, like, do both. Definitely do both. Co keep co-op to be on the safer side. Co-op is a safety net for a lot of things, even though sometimes you don't find the jobs, as, as many jobs as you would like to, but it's a safety net. Once you're confident that you don't need co-op at all, or you can manage on your own, uh, you, you're free to drop co-op, but definitely use that as a backup and a safety net. And for international students, I don't think you should drop out of co-op at all until you're very close to finding a full time because you cannot work here on uh, work. If you're on a study permit here, you cannot work outside without a co-op permit. OK, so we've talked about the internships. Now let's go on to the full time lifestyle, which I'm sure everyone has a bunch of questions about. So yeah. first off, what are the typical benefits a software developer can expect? Mm, benefits. Well, as an internship, uh, as an intern doing an internship, you're you're a contract worker basically. I meant you don't this get full time. I meant this full time. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, <laughs> I just uh, I'm just saying like as an intern, you you you're a contract worker, right? Yep. Uh, so you don't get those benefits plus as many benefits as an employee does who is hired there without the uh, end date. So the first thing is that you finally have something you can kind of call home that, okay, I'm settled, you know, like, okay, I got a job and now I'm going to work here until I, I need to change or anything. But you have a job and you have some employee benefits, which you interns don't get as well. But uh, 
I think, and you have your own projects and you're working for a longer term. As an intern, sometimes you either work on a project that is only for that internship duration or you work in a project that's already being built and then you say bye after four or eight months and you just like I don't think you can call it on your your own if you're not that involved in it but as a full time you're I'm enjoying my stuff and I'm like this app goes to production and people are using it so I'm like I work here I'm proud to work here you know okay uh okay so we know a little bit about that as a career since we're here advertising your career what, mm-hmm. uh, what what can I expect as I go down later down the years? Because I hear a lot of things as a newcomer, right? Uh, it's a bit ageist, right? So what can I expect as I go as I go down further, five, ten, maybe fifteen years? Um, do, do you mean in terms of like anybody, or are, are you asking specifically like for me for your like career, right? Yeah. What are the promotions you get, and like okay, what, what the salary raises are? That that's what I meant. I see. Well, uh, well, in the in terms of software developer, you start as a junior software developer, right? Then there's a associate and or mid level, and then there's senior lead staff. Well, so there's different kind of software developers. If you just want to stay in software development line, if you wanna, if you realize that you don't like coding, you like product management more, you can change your career without. You don't need a degree for it. Yeah. Maybe helps. Maybe a diploma helps, but you don't need it. You can convert your career to be a product manager or a product owner where you're overlooking developers. You have your own team and you're still working on a project. So it could be that. And in terms of salary raises, it's usually true that changing a job after a few maybe years or maybe months, not months, I mean, changing years, like it's better than hoping for a raise. But it also depends on uh, how much are you enjoying work, right? If you're enjoying this job that you work in and you're like, I, I like working here, maybe it's not about money. It's more about work. Mm-hmm. It usually it is. So uh, start and always look out. Don't be like, I'm going to block my LinkedIn and not apply to any job because I, I get offers all the time. Like I, I, I get messages to apply for jobs. So I, I still look at them. Like I wouldn't just be like, no, I'm not going to look at them. I enjoy my work. But uh, it's it's up to you. How are you like it? Okay, so <clears throat> what are the top, you know, apps or whatever services you use to get a job full time? Full time. Um, I think the most common ones like LinkedIn, Indeed. Yeah. Indeed surprisingly gave me two interviews for full time, okay. and they were really good companies as well. Um. Angel List was really good. I actually got Helio Clinic with Angel List. Okay. So, yeah, I think these three were the only main ones that I used. How important is it to have like a filled out LinkedIn? What do you say? Very important. LinkedIn is amazing. I love that tool, and uh, it really shows everything. I definitely I would recommend that uh, we should have like a list of LinkedIn's that offer people that you wanna you know be inspired by, and we should. Keep a track of them, like how they maintain it. I maintain my LinkedIn all the time, and I have all my volunteer experiences, languages, endorsements really help, and uh, recommendations really help. I think LinkedIn is great to judge a person's uh, career and portfolio. Okay. Yeah. That's that's not only just as like a software developer. That's for many careers, right? Yeah, for sure. Yes. Okay. And. Okay, now here we go to a bit of the downside. So, uh, what what is the biggest pain points as a software developer? Uh, you work remote, right? So we got to make that distinction before you go on. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I couldn't tell you. I, I couldn't tell you what they're good. <laughs> I'm not saying that I love my job so much, or I'm just this guy who goes all the time. I'm just. I don't think there's any flaw. If there are any flaws, I would find those flaws in other jobs as well. I don't think there's anything specific in software development. I don't know, maybe screen time? <laughs> I don't know. Wow, what an answer. I actually didn't expect any of that. Okay, so... <laughs> what were you expecting? Like, what would you call a downside for software development? I mean, I've only been here for, like, what? One month and 11 days. 
So, right. But what, what do you think? Like, what would what would you expect? Or I mean, you have been a student as well. So, what do you think your downside could be as a software dev? The most the most important thing is probably what you said. It's pretty unhealthy to be a software developer, and especially. Oh well, yeah, no, not just screen time posture as well. Yeah, posture like. Yeah. I, I don't know, like, especially with like at least in person jobs, you kind of have to go there. Remote can like while remote is probably better in my opinion. It mm -hmm. kind of <laughs> what it does to you is it makes you kind of a kind of a subhuman. You know, you, you become like, oh, it's time to work, and then <laughs> and then you like roll out of bed and you're like, oh, well, I'm like twenty minutes late, so uh, whatever. Yeah, a little bit yeah. like that. Okay, yeah, you're right. I, remote work is not for everyone. Some like to keep routine. But for me personally, when I was at Deloitte, it was that routine for me. I felt like I was in a movie, an indie movie where a guy wakes up, gets in a bus, and then just does job, then comes back, then wakes up, does job. So it was like, I didn't like that. But, you know, like I said, I there's nothing in software development that's different from other jobs. So commuting is just every job. So there's nothing specifically like this is why you shouldn't do software development. Well, maybe don't do software development if you hate coding, because you won't find as much success as you want to, as you would see others getting. Right. So <clears throat> if I'm a student now, we're we're rewinding it, of yes. course, because I don't go in order. <laughs> uh, I don't know who to reach out to. Who do I? Where do I find people that are like-minded individuals? and will help me help propel me forward um universities is university is physical now right there's no online i think in fall it, it, it's going to be physical okay so university of windsor is okay go to university go to java lounge for university of windsor see people you're shy everybody's shy it's computer science nobody's here an extra word so just sit next to people and probably listen to them and just chime in talk to people they know stuff. Everybody knows stuff. They would probably know wrong stuff, but it would still like a conversation and it would know what to do. Talk to people. We have career advisor uh, position. You're, you're there and CSS is amazing. CSS works so much. I'm really proud of what uh, we're making CSS to be. Full of resources and everybody's there to help. And like initiatives like this, like doing a podcast, it's an amazing. I love that idea. And uh, CSS is great. Like... Uh, for University of Windsor, the department, the computer science department is great. Um, talking to professor, talking to professor, I completely missed that part because I didn't go that way. I know people who talk to professors and they were like, even in first year, that I want to research, I want to do a research. And maybe if we're getting really good grades, you probably go uh, get into what's it called? Like get outstanding uh, scholars, outstanding scholars. Outstanding scholars, and you get RA positions as well. So, so stuff like that, like. Talk to professors, show your interest, make sure they know you. And um, I, I think you'll manage. I think uh, resources are there. I would, you cannot tell me that I want to do something, but there's no resources for it. Okay. There's plenty of resources. No matter where you are. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was a great advisor for online. We were all online. And I think a lot of, uh, there were a lot of changes for that. And that was the first career advisor position as well in CSS. The point is, don't sit around and do nothing. Just yeah. walk around, do something is the point. Yeah, yeah do something. And there, everybody's there to help you. Like That was my one of my first uh, um, impressions of Canada as well. Or I wouldn't call it maybe Canada or maybe my university. Everybody was there to help. Right. So it depends, too, because... Uh, of course, some people's like experience is different, but there are people out there. It, it doesn't mean everyone's bad if you've had a poor experience. There are people willing to help you. And there are people in your university. I don't care how trash you think your university is. Uh, a lot of University of Windsor students. Do. Well, while, whether it's true or not, people have made it from the position you are in. Talk to people like this, right? So Definitely. I uh, I like to think about it a lot. I think uh, every university just has this notion that because others are saying stuff about university that it's bad, I'm going to know that it's bad. Like I don't 
like, okay, University of Windsor, it's great. And it's not like, oh, University of Windsor doesn't do this. So there's a lot of universities like that. Like, um, every university ha has its flaw. Nobody's going to be like, I'm so happy to be in this university. I don't think even Waterloo says that. They're just making fun of themselves as well. So it's not university's fault. You can do whatever. And like I said, computer science is the only career where you make your own experience. Yeah. And people say that a degree doesn't get you a job. They don't say that if you don't like if you don't study, you won't get a job or anything. It's it's a it's a different meaning. What they mean is you won't be applying and directly what you're learning. You won't be you're learning C. You won't be applying C in your daily life. But you're learning things that you're learning like um you know like those keywords like you're learning routine, you're learning logical thinking, you're making connections in your brain, you're you you know how to manage stuff, product managing, everything. You won't directly be applying these things, but a person who has only learned something from the internet, who has a degree and is doing a job at Google just by learning online, it's just those cases just reach news because they're unique. A degree is very important. Okay, which brings me to the next very important point is, of course, while there there's always going to be people more successful or further ahead than you, it's important not to compare yourself. And everyone yeah. falls for this. I've fallen for this so many times. Yeah. There's so many people who who will be ahead of you and you have to remind yourself it's not it's not your journey it's not their journey is not yours you're you're mm -hmm. not them right yes yes for sure yeah um yeah <laughs> i fall for that too it's uh it's normal this and imposter syndrome where you're thinking everybody's amazing except you like i it sounds so stupid saying out loud but everybody thinks that you're like maybe i'm the only one and somehow everybody thinks I'm an amazing, but maybe I'm like the worst guy and they're just like, one day they're going to know that, okay, actually he doesn't know anything. Like there's a fear, but no, it's not like that. If it's like that, then everybody's, nobody's knowing anything in that case. So this and uh, like, don't compare yourself. Everybody works at their own pace. And this is, this sounds like a, it's more like a relieving thing. Like, okay, don't, it's fine. It's time to fail. But it's fine. Like, uh, this is normal. Sometimes you get a very big company right away in your first year. But that's not because that person was not in the same position as you. He probably knew, he, they probably knew what you didn't. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Uh, any words to people that are grinding away right now? It's like june 11th when we're recording this there there's probably some people just going through tons of applications right now do you have any words for them yeah keep going <laughs> you just need one right you just need to sign one offer letter you don't need to be like i need 100 out of 1000 you just need one what do you and say, maybe it's the last one that you apply would you say after like a certain number and you don't have anything that you're doing it kind of wrong well, would you say that's true yeah um, I don't have a number in mind, but for sure, if you're thinking that I have done over 50 applications and I still haven't found anything, 50 is still a small number, I think, for a first year at least. Yeah. Uh, if you're thinking something's wrong, reach out to the career advisor, reach out to other people or in the CSS chat or anything like that. They would catch immediately, like get opinions and see what's wrong. Yeah. Like, and, and I know people who had nothing wrong at all. I personally worked on their portfolio LinkedIn resume and they still were not getting any jobs. Sometimes it's the time. Just time is not right. That, Continue that studying. Me, I think you, you did that for me once. And I, had, I had nothing. Yeah. yeah it, it, maybe you don't have anything wrong in your portfolio experience, anything at all. Sometimes just the time is not right. Continue studying. Try next time. Right. Don't, don't, don't give up. What's the point of giving up? What are you going to do after that? Okay. <laughs> right? We're getting towards the end. Do you have anyone to shout out anything to say before we end this one off? Oh, so many people to shout out. I'm going to miss like so many people. First person, is, uh, it's um, well, it's Jose Alba, who was my mentor. He's currently working at Google in Germany. And he was the guy who introduced me to everything there is. And who I feel like whoever I am, probably because of him, uh, I probably would be otherwise just studying, getting good grades, and then getting a job. It would be a different life trajectory for me. So I want to shout out to him first off. And then there's everybody in the university, everybody I've talked to, 
and CSS, like for sure, CSS is amazing. And uh, uh, this, this is a bad question then, because I'm going to forget so many people and feel bad later that I didn't shout out to them. So, oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So we'll keep it, we keep it pretty general. If, if, if Harshdeep has ever talked to you about anything, it, you, he shout out to you. Yeah, exactly. Let's say that. Okay. Yeah. Even as a mentee or a mentor, same thing. Okay. Any final words? And, uh... um, I don't know. I feel like uh, we covered a lot of stuff. There's still a lot of stuff that has to be covered and a lot of questions. I think we this podcast was amazing. We should keep doing that with find other. I think there's a lot of people, experienced people who have graduated yeah. or are on fourth year who has a lot of knowledge about these things. So I want to I want to see this podcast continue. Keep getting questions from people who are listening. I think it's great. Keep doing that. And uh, yeah. And okay. for the people who are listening, keep grinding. You'll get there. Success, really success. Get there. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for being my first ever guest, Harsh. Uh, really yeah, important, sure. you know, the yeah. passing of the torch, previous career advisor to current one, you know. Well, anyways, right. thanks everyone for listening or watching whatever, whatever we upload this on. Uh, and we'll see you in like two weeks for the next one.